whether you're a brand new teacher or a returning teacher just looking for new ideas, this video is the one for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am Sarah. I am a third grade teacher. Today's video, as you can tell from the video title, is going to be a plan with me, more like a walkthrough of what I intend to do on the first day of school. Trust me, I used to be there when I was in my first year of teaching. I had no clue what I was going to do about two to three days before the first day of school. If you watch my first year of teaching experience video, I will make sure to leave a link down below. You'll know all about my story and trust me you're not alone so hopefully this video will provide some ideas or at least give you a jump start for your own planning these plans are safe to follow if you're in the upper grades like third through fifth grade second grade I think you're safe kindergarten definitely not that's a whole nother field um, I definitely wouldn't follow these plans if you're teaching kindergarten definitely just watch and see if you get inspired if you get any ideas or maybe questions that will come to mind that you can ask your team when you get to school if you're like me you have no idea how to feel about the fact that pre-service week is looming pre-service week is the week where all the teachers go back and they start setting up and preparing for the school year now the thing is that I literally just finished summer school I have been working pretty much all summer long um, but at the same time because I have moved to a brand new school and I just received a message that all my boxes made it safely to the new school I am so anxious to kind of get in and at least set up, at least organize and unpack all of my boxes before I start setting up my classroom and preparing for school, preparing lesson plans. Um, at any rate, I decided to at least go ahead and plan for the first two days of school. And the thing is that I don't know what the schedule is like. I don't know how they go about things in this new school year uh, or in this new school. So I literally just planned for like a general first day of school because I figure that has to be the same throughout all the schools. Before I get started, I wanted to walk you through some resources that I have that I feel may help you with the planning process and just getting ready for your first year of school. I mentioned them in an early video, but I'm going to show them to you again. These are basically back to school checklists. Um, one is for the classroom, one is for back to school, like how to go about your first day of school or your first week of school, and then a teacher checklist. So things that basically you will be needing um, in order to have a productive school year. Now, it's just a generalized list. Again, you would want to go to your school, to your team and ask them specifically what it is you'll need. This back to school checklist is kind of where I got some of the ideas that I am going to be mentioning in this video. If you're a returning teacher and you don't really need like specific checklists, I do have this weekly task planning sheet. Um, and what I like to do is I like to fold it in half and it serves as like a bookmark. Like if you have a planner and you just want to bookmark a particular week, um, it just, it gets thicker when you fold it in half and you can slide it in and easily open up to a page. But what I like about it is that it organizes basically like your overall to-do list. There's a to-do list here on this side, a to print and copy on this side, notes for anything um, that you need to do, contacts. This is typically for like student contacts, but if you need to make phone calls or message anyone um, prior to school starting, then you would, you know, jot it down here. And, and on this side, there's like an events page to remind you of anything that's going on. And then just some think about for next week. So definitely go ahead. I will leave a link down to my TPT store where you can find all of these products that I mentioned to help you with your planning and to help you get organized for the first week of school. For my planner this year, I am using a planner that I made. I just love making my own planners. So I created this planner that I felt like was really straightforward and just had all the things that I knew I was going to need to have a productive year. Throughout the video, you're going to see me looking down this way because that's where my planner is. But toward the end of the video, I can give you a snapshot of what the week looks like, of what the first day of school looks like in the plan book itself. Now, before I get started with the actual plans, I did kind of want to set the scene for you. So prior to the first day of school, I like to prepare a checklist of about three to four things that I would like my students to do. And I have that ready for them on the smart board. Also, I'd like to think about an activity that is simple and doesn't require a lot of instructions and a lot of 
hovering over that the students can pretty much do independently. The activity that I like to prepare ahead of time for my students to work on independently as they walk in through the door while I'm greeting students and while I'm taking care of things off of my to-do list for the morning is this all about my selfie packet. This packet has been my go-to for the past two years and I really like it because it's your way of getting to know your students but it also gives you time to take care of those things that need to get done in the morning. I also like to put a pencil, a sharpened pencil, alongside with this packet. It's already passed out on top of their desks and on top of each table team desks I have a caddy with color pencils and crayons so that way if they're not prepared or they don't have certain materials you don't have to worry about scrounging around looking for something for them and they can stay seated and ready for the next set of directions. Once my students are in and settled, I like to go through my to-do list, which typically that is taking attendance because you still have to take attendance on the first day of school, as well as taking lunch orders because students have to eat. So you need to figure out what it is they're gonna eat and send that off. Usually those are the first two things that you need to send first thing in the morning. Also, while they're working on their all about me packets this is the time where I circulate around and I ask the students how they plan on getting home now if your students are in the upper grades generally they already know this information um, but I know at my at my old school they used to stamp the bus number on the students hand or they would provide a dot sticker or like a card or some kind of label that would tell me how they were gonna get home. In this planner, I have this two-page spread where you can easily jot down the bus number or the color of the bus or whether they are car riders or walkers or whether they go to daycare um, down on this spreadsheet. That way you have it ready to go and handy for dismissal. Another thing I like to prepare before the first day of school is a presentation with facts about me, which I like to share with my students throughout the day. I don't like to necessarily go through everything all in one sitting. Once I've introduced myself and shared one or two facts, I move on to the morning routine. So this is where I walk them through the actual morning routine flip flow chart or checklist that I have created and I walk them through every single step that they need to accomplish before the school day starts. Not only do I read the list out loud to them, but I also model it. This is where I get the giggles in really early on in the morning because I like to actually act out the do's and the don'ts of preparing for the morning. So I'll actually like step out of the class and walk back in like as a rowdy student and They'll get their little chuckles in. Then I like to go out and then come right back in as a student who was following directions and doing the right thing. Once I have modeled it for them and I have clearly outlined the expectations, I like to call on each group to try it themselves. Before I call on groups, I usually have them take out any of the materials they bought for school outside and they place them on top of their desks so that way we can sort through all of that later. Um, but this gives them an opportunity to empty out their backpack and hang it on the coat rack section or put it in their cubbies or whatever it is that you have. Once you have called on all of the groups, all the backpacks should be hanging in the coat rack or in the cubbies. And you can call each team to sort out their materials in pre-made baskets that you have labeled with like glue sticks, pencils, folders, journals, or whatever it is that you have requested. That way they don't go back home with the materials and that way it's not just stuffed inside of their desk. Once that's complete, I like to go into my first icebreaker, which I'm not sure the order of the icebreakers, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you one of the ones I plan on doing for the first day of school. One of them is called Find Your Joke Partner, which is a product I also found on TPT. Basically, the students with the questions have to go around asking the question, and the person with the answer has to like figure out that that's their partner. Once they have found each other, they go sit down on the carpet and wait for everyone to have found their partner. When everyone has found their partner, I give them a chance to stand up with your partner and share the riddle out loud and it's a great way to get laughs in in the morning. Another thing I plan on doing um, because I feel like it sets the tone for my expectations is setting up ground rules. Now students have the opportunity to establish their own ground rules for their own class so basically that means that it is a lengthier process so make sure you plan accordingly. Now what I've done in the past is I followed this Baldridge book and I can't remember the exact title but I know it has something to do with Baldridge. Um, I used to follow that book to a T in my first two years of teaching. I've definitely modified it ever since. So what I like to do is establish ground rules and in order to do that I like to do a read aloud which I found 
online and the title is The Day the Monster Came to School. The only difference is that instead of reading out loud the word monster, I like to say swampy because it relates to an activity we do on the second day of school. It's about a kid who came into school not knowing what rules were and he did his own thing, pushed students, he wouldn't line up in order. And I use that story to ask students at the end, what kind of rules should we have in our classroom to avoid swampy moments? And then from that discussion, we'll come up with our ground rules for the class. Once that's complete, I provide an opportunity for movement with a classroom scavenger hunt. Now in the past, I used to do a classroom tour where the students would track me around the room and I would tell them what station this was and what station that was and where to find this or where to find that. But I quickly learned that that was just kind of boring and students wouldn't remember. So I decided to make a scavenger hunt last year and it worked out really well. And I just kind of like came up with riddles for things that students use around the room or places that students would need to go around the room while I was in guided math or reading groups. I came up with like a quick description and then the students would walk around and find um, letters on index cards that labeled where those items were. And it was really fun and really engaging and I bet that it helped them remember more so than me just kind of walking around and talking about it for like half an hour. At this point in my planner, I have that we may be going to lunch and recess. When we come back, we do our materials prep. So this is where the students label their folders and their journals. I have already prepared label stickers that say reading, writing, math, science, social studies. And so basically they put a sticker on their journal and they put a sticker in their folder and then they write their names on both. This typically doesn't take more than half an hour. Um, I have like the labels already pre-cut. All they have to do is take a sticker, pass it to the next person, and then like we kind of move through each subject. If you have all the labels ready to go and all the journals and folders ready, it should be hassle free and it'll definitely give you one less thing you have to do after the school day. When the students come back from lunch and recess, this is another opportunity for another icebreaker. And this one is a get to know you bingo. I can't remember who I got it from. I wish I knew, but you can just kind of search it on TPT. I haven't decided which one they're gonna do, but I'm gonna make photocopies of one of them. With this, they walk around and they read the description out loud to a different student and they hope that they can write their initials in here. So they might say, do you play soccer? Or were you born in another country? Are you the youngest child? And if the kid says yes, then they get to write their initials in the box. When that's done, what I have in my plans is mail distribution. Now, this is, I'm sure, true in any school. Like on the first day of school, you have to send a ton of documents and forms that parents need to fill out and sign. One of those is parent contact forms which you can also find in my TPT store. I created this um, and I really like it because it asks for specific information like good times to call parents and, and you know whether they accept text messages or if they prefer emails, um, if there are any siblings that go to the school, which I find useful to know. Um, this form is in English as well as in Spanish. So if you're interested, I will leave a link down below to this product as well. Usually they send home like the lunch calendar, um, the student rights and responsibilities books, the planners, everything else you can possibly think of has to go home. So that's where I usually take some time to like go over what documents stay home and what documents need to come back and what they are. Then I am going to talk about the planner procedures. So each student will be getting a planner and I will walk them through how to fill it out and what they need to do with it because I know that my team already decided that the students will be getting homework on the first day of school. And then lastly, to end the day, I like to go over the dismissal routine flowchart or checklist that I have also created. And I like to not only tell them what it is that I expect them to do, but I also like to model it. Again, modeling is key to success. If you want the students to do exactly what you want them to do, you gotta show them, not just tell them. That is not everything that I'm gonna do on the first day of school. For the first day of school and the first week of school, you'll see that a lot of the things that are there, I didn't mention in this video, but I do have um, in my other little box, um, some of the things that I need to go over, such as lining up, call and response strategies as well as going over bathroom procedures and more. Also please remember that no one expects you to start instruction on the first day of school. 
what you really need to devote your time to is establishing those routines and procedures from the very beginning, not just on the first day of school, but reviewing them throughout the first week of school and even the second week of school if you have to. It's going to pay off in the long run and trust me, the kids are going to like you more for going over those ground rules and focusing on community building activities and icebreakers versus starting instruction on the very first day of school. stuck around congratulations I plan on doing a giveaway so if you saw the planner that I shared with you it's one that I made if you're interested in having one for yourself I will be choosing one person to give the zip file to so you would have to create it at home and set it up by yourself but I will forward you the zip file through your email all you have to do is comment down below with when you start your first day as well as anything that you heard me say that you are interested in trying for yourself Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. If you're interested in more videos, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell in order to receive notifications for when I post my next video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Please comment down below and don't forget to click the subscribe button. I'm also on Instagram and I have a TPT store. I'll have all the links down below so that you can check them out. Just click on show more.